the site of delivery of, uh, of the immunogens as um, a factor for, uh, for the efficacy of uh, DNA vaccines. So uh, our main tool for, uh, for uh, conducting these studies as, is uh, bioluminescence imaging, and uh, that is mainly based on uh, the function of luciferases. Uh, luciferase is an enzyme. Um, it catalyzes the oxidation of uh, luciferin, which is its substrate, and uh, the byproduct of, of this uh, reaction is the emission of uh, luminescent light. That light um, has a, a, a peak of emission uh, that is uh, around 600 nanometers, which is perfect for, um, for the function of, of, of imaging, since uh, a light over 600 nanometers penetrates tissues easily and can be, um, can be detected from the, uh, from the outside. Um, the mechanism by, uh, by which the imaging works is uh, you first label your, uh, your cells or whatever it is that you're introducing in, uh, in the animal model, um, and then, uh, then detect the light, the bioluminescent light in a low light condition, uh, and that light can be uh, uh, easily quantified with, uh, with the right tools, which in this case are the uh, charge coupled cameras. Um, and you can do that in a couple of, in two uh, modalities. One is the two dimensional modality, uh, which is uh, um, planar, planar detection of, of the light. It doesn't give you any depth perception. You only see the, surf, the, the light on the surface. And you can also combine that uh, in uh, the three-dimensional modality, which, uh, which can give you uh, the depth of, uh, of the signal source. And I'll talk a little bit more about the three-dimensional modality. It's also called bioluminescence tomography. Uh, and it combines the, the detection of bioluminescent light with um, a micro CD scan. Um, so how it works is uh, the, the small animals are first uh, subjected to the, to the tomography. And um, then the bioluminescent light passes through a series of filters, which, which break it down. and uh, uh, in that way, um, since the tissues have, uh, uh, since the light uh, is absorbed passing by the, uh, through the tissues, um, <clears throat> they, uh, the machine that detects it can take advantage of that and kind of uh, see where the source of the, of the signal is. Um, <clears throat> We use uh, bioluminescence imaging in, uh, in, the, in our studies, which focus on delivering of, uh, of immunogens. And uh, in our lab, we mainly study uh, intradermal and intramuscular delivery of DNA vaccines. Uh, in all our uh, experiments, we use uh, electroporation. Um, <clears throat> and we use uh, both modalities of uh, bioluminescent imaging, which is the planar. Uh, and we study the, the parameters that, that we get from, from imaging the, the animals afterwards. And with, uh, when using bioluminescent, the planar bioluminescent imaging, it is just the, the plain light that comes out of the animals, which is the, also called the photon flux. Uh, and when we use the bioluminescence tomography, we can actually look at, at more uh, parameters. Again, the, the, the photon flux, but we also get uh, the depth that I talked about. Um, and we, we, can, uh, we, can study, um, we can study the volume of, of the signal as, as shown here. So here's an example, a typical example that we get after uh, immunization of animals. Uh, on the top we have uh, intradermal de intramuscular delivery with uh, the characteristic uh, higher expression, higher and uh, uh, more prolonged expression of, uh, of our reporter. And on the bottom, we have uh, intradermal delivery, where the expression is not as, as strong and is uh, more fleeting. Um, and uh, when we inject, we also uh, look at, at the depth. And uh, it's been pointed here. We have the intradermal delivery. Uh, and it's a pretty shallow uh, source of the signal. It's, uh, less than one millimeter, and on the top we have uh, intramuscular delivery with uh, depth of over uh, two millimeters. And uh, to kind of show that um, what we're seeing is, is, is real, 
we've uh, uh, surgically excited the, the skin here, and uh, all the all the uh, expression expressing cells remain in the skin, and this is the muscle of of the mice uh, that has no signal whatsoever. Uh, we 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 can use that technique to actually control our delivery and. Uh, um, optimize uh, also our uh, expression of, uh, of, of, of the antigen the way, the way we want it. If we want a high uh, expression uh, for intramuscular or a lower one in intradermal. So uh, the experiment that I'm going to talk about, uh, that's the plan for it. Um, we immunized uh, mice with uh, either a TH1 or a TH2 polarizing immunogen. And we did that by uh, either uh, intradermal or intramuscular delivery. Uh, and then we studied the expression levels and the immunogenicity of the delivered immunogens. So uh, just to talk about the, the immunogens that we used, uh, TH1 immunogen was uh, HIV protease. Uh, and it's been shown by, um, by our colleagues that uh, it's a, a purely uh, TH1 immunogen. Um, it's been, uh, the immunogen itself, uh, protease, has been uh, inactivated by a point mutation. Uh, and uh, here you can see that, uh, that the drop of activity of over uh, 70%. And uh, with that came actually uh, sort of an unexpected result that uh, the expression levels were, were also a hundredfold higher after that. Um, our TH2 immunogen was um, um, HIV reverse transcriptase, and that's also been uh, expression optimized and inactivated. And it's been also shown by uh, by our lab that um, the uh, responses, the immune responses that you get after delivery, are purely uh, humoral. So then. Uh, after inject, uh, injecting, we looked at um, expression kinetics. And um, for, um, for our TH2 immunogen, we saw, we saw um, an increasing signal up to day three. And the decrease, the clearance uh, of uh, expressing cells started after that. Whereas uh, with the TH1 immunogen, uh, it was a decrease of signal or killing of the expressing cells started uh, straight from day one and continued, continued throughout uh, the follow-up period. Um, for uh, intradermal, intramuscular delivery, um, TH2 immunogen uh, pre, uh, expression of it uh, continued up until day nine, uh, whereas for the TH1 immunogen, it was again up to, the, uh, up to day three when uh, the drop started. Uh, now, it's, it, it's of note to uh, point out that um, the clearance of expressing cells was uh, more complete for both antigens when they were delivered intradermal. Uh, after that, we looked at, um, we did our immunoassays at uh, the end of the study after sacrificing the animal, and we actually um, uh, looked at the uh, immune responses. We did that by fluorospot, so we looked at uh, interferon gamma, IL-2, and uh, uh, cells also expressing, secreting both uh, cytokines. Um, the, the immune response uh, after intradermal delivery, as you can see uh, from, from these graphs, was um, up to two-fold higher. Uh, uh, that was for, uh, so we, we harvested the cells from spleens, and we stimulated them with either a, a CD4 T cell specific epitope uh, or um, peptide and uh, a CD8 uh, T cell specific peptide. Uh, <clears throat> and as you can see, it's up to a two fold increase uh, compared to intramuscular. Um, for protease, we also looked at um, uh, antibody responses, but um, those were negligible, so we uh, excluded them from, from our further analysis. Although it's, uh, it's uh, interesting to say that uh, uh, we still uh, saw an increase of uh, antibody uh, secretion after intradermal delivery. For um, RT, um, we saw uh, a, there was basically no difference between intramuscular and uh, intradermal delivery as far as uh, uh, 
um, uh, cell responses are concerned. Uh, however, if uh, it, it is a Th2 antigen, so what you're looking at is, is antibody responses, and those were significantly higher uh, after intradermal delivery as compared to uh, intramuscular. Uh, in a previous uh, study that, that we did, um, we saw that there was uh, a correlation actually between um, the levels of, of reporter and uh, uh, reporter expression and the immune response. So we decided to uh, to try to try that approach and um, uh, in in this uh, uh, vaccination trial and look at. Uh, uh, if there's a correlation between the immune responses and the level of expression of, uh, of the reporter. So we did a correlation analysis, and uh, in that we saw that there was actually uh, significant correlations between the expression and, uh, and the immune responses. And uh, here I, I've broken it down into uh, CD4, CD8 responses, and also uh, antibody responses, how they correlate with the uh, the, the expression profile. And for uh, CD4 T cell responses, we can see that, that they're pretty different. Uh, ID responses uh, have a direct correlation, meaning that higher expression correlates with uh, higher responses. And um, in intramuscular, we see the opposite picture, uh, whereas uh, expression drops and um, Responses uh, responses are higher when the when the expression is uh, is lower. Uh, uh, interestingly, uh, and when we look at uh, IgG production, we see that uh, it is also different uh, according to the to the way you immunize. For intradermal injection, you see uh, that a higher initial expression uh, leads to a higher. Um, um, leads to a higher uh, secretion of antibodies. And for uh, intramuscular, we see that it's an it's a inverse uh, correlation all the way. So basically, lower expression um, leads to high, uh, lower, um, lower luminescence leads, uh, correlates with higher um, secretion of antibodies. Uh, we also looked at, uh, uh, at these the same sort of analysis in, uh, when, when we immunized with protease, and we saw no significant correlations in uh, intradermal delivery. Uh, the only significant ones were uh, when, uh, when protease was delivered intramuscularly, and they occurred at uh, day 15 after delivery. And the correlation was, was direct, meaning that uh, higher expression, higher luminescence of, uh, uh, higher luminescence uh, produced higher, higher responses. So to, to conclude, um, we, uh, um, we state that uh, skin is a preferable target for, uh, for immune del immune, immunogen delivery. And um, as you saw, Th1 and Th2 antigens both produce uh, a characteristic expression signature. Um, the, the immune responses also uh, were found to uh, correlate to expression levels of the reporter, and uh, we think that this, this correlation is, is worth exploring and can be used to uh, uh, model immune responses in, in the future, and we're working on that currently. And I want to conclude with... Uh, Thanking the people in uh, in our group for for the support and their work on this project. Thank you. Did you um, happen to look at the dendritic cell activation or Langerhans activation uh, or in the draining nodes? I mean, the, the responses are very nice. I'm wondering a mechanistic approach as far as finding out, are you seeing differential activation status of your DCs with the different deliveries? Yeah, we, uh, we, we haven't had a, a chance to do that yet, uh, but we are planning on doing that, that sort of study. We have, uh, well, uh, the animals get sacrificed at uh, 21 days after, after the, the injection. So that's as, as far as, uh, as we've looked since 
we can't physically uh, do that. But um, for uh, for the Th2 type immunogen, um, antigen is is cleared at day, uh, day 21. There's there's nothing left, uh, but there is still some uh, remaining activity with with uh, protease with the Th1 immunogen.